Hey guys, welcome back to the layout. So today I've got another HO how to video for you. I'm going to be showing you how to install a tortoise switch machine on my layout. Um, basically, I'm going to be showing you everything I have to do, such as taking the springs out of my Pico switches, um, installing the double pull, double throw switches, uh, as well as the LEDs, since I do not use DCC control. Um, so I will be just installing that switch on a wood shim temporarily until I can get a fascia up. Um, this is my third try at making the video, so hopefully it's not terribly long and uh, I'm able to get it done this time. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Okay guys, here we are on my very messy and full workbench. Uh, I've laid out everything I'm going to need just because I like to make sure that I'm not missing anything. Helps me stay kind of organized. I hate getting into the middle of a project and then having to stop because I need a part or I'm missing something. So I try to tend to uh, get everything together first. Uh, and I'm just going to go through everything really quick. Uh, we just have some needle nose pliers just to hold things. Um, some snips just to cut wires uh, and other wires <laughs> um, two different kinds of wires you'll kind of see as I as I mention it uh, Phillips head screwdriver uh, just to you know use the terminal strips and uh, put the screw into the tortoise switch machine uh, this is just a hobby knife knife kit basically um, it's just used to cut the foam um, to make it easier so that I don't um, necessarily need to drill through the whole thing. I just like to cut like the road bed out of the way and stuff so it doesn't get snagged. Uh, I'm putting here a drill. There's a couple different bits I use, um, but we'll go through them as we go. Um, helping hands, I think it's called. It's basically just a little magnifier with some alligator clips. It's extremely useful in these cases because I'm uh, soldering wires onto LEDs uh, and I have to hold, you know, the small double pull, double throw switch. So uh, really, really helpful. I would suggest it to anybody. Although I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to kind of cut out a 2x4 and tack this to it because uh, it just doesn't weigh enough and it spins and tilts over and... It's kind of a pain in the butt sometimes, but really great, really great. Recommend this to everybody. Wire stripper, obviously, to strip and cut wires. Solder and a soldering gun, obviously, we're going to need those. Drill, you're going to need a couple, well, I'm going to need a couple different, different bits anyways. Um, I use a, let's see, um, a 7 sixteenths bit to make the hole for the throw bar. Uh, in through my foam and plywood. Uh, I use a smaller couple bits to make the holes in my what will be my fascia but is right now wood shims uh, so I'm not going to worry about those sizes because it'll vary for everyone. Uh, we of course have the tortoise machine, the, uh, the throw adjuster and the screw and I'm not sure if that's going to come up on camera. Oh yeah it's there. And uh, we have a terminal block that you've seen in many of my wiring videos before. We have some Cat5e cable. Um, it's small enough. I like to use it. It's pretty well the perfect size for these tortoises. Um, I, I, I like using it. It's a little temperamental when you get into using a lot of the terminal strips. But it solders perfectly onto the LEDs, onto the, uh, the double pull, double throw switch when they're this small. It just works great. And all I do is I strip that. You've got the eight, uh, the four pair of the eight wires. And uh, they're color coded. Uh, so you can kind of separate everything. Um, I typically don't color code everything the same. Because that would be just a waste of wire. So I basically cut out a strip and use whatever I need to use. Uh, I can just, you know. By looking at it, I can tell what goes where. But I'll explain that in more detail. Uh, we have a small double throw, double pull switch, which is no stranger uh, if you've seen my uh, programming track tutorial. And we've got two bicolor LEDs, uh, which are green and red. And what that means is if you put the voltage through one way, it is green. If you reverse the voltage, it is red. And that's very useful uh, because I don't need to wire up four different LEDs uh, I can just wire up two. Alright so uh, before we get started I wanted to talk about the two wiring diagrams that we're going to be using. 
the first one is the tortoise switch machine and then the second one is the double pull double throw switch. Uh, let's go ahead and start on the switch machine itself. Uh, on the tortoise we have eight pins. All right, pin one, pin one and eight drive the motor. So what that means is if you put a positive on one and a negative current on eight, uh, the switch machine will go left, okay? Uh, then what you need to do is you need to reverse the polarity for the motor to go right. It's a basic motor, it's just very slowly geared. So, you know, you, you, want, you put the wires one way, it will spin left and throw the switch left. You reverse the wires, change the polarity, it will spin right and switch the switch right, the turnout right. Um, basically, that that's it for the switch machine itself, and that's the only feature I use, but it has more options. You can see from pin 2 to 7, uh, it actually has two switches built in, and what I mean by that is uh, pin 2, 3, and 4 we're going to be using as the example. Um, a lot of people tend to want to power their frog when you have an electro frog switch, and what you can do is you can actually feed power to any of the pins and use them to uh, provide power t to and from something. So in this case what a lot of people do is they'll put say the outer rail on pin 2, the inner rail on pin 3, and the frog on pin 4. Because what happens is when po say positive is on pin 1, negative is on pin 8, say it is the you know the motor goes to the left and pin four and three have contact well when you reverse the polarity to one and eight uh, pin two four and two will then have contact instead and that will allow you to change the uh, the power to your frog in, in this case of the example uh, so people use that for signals for frogs it's very useful uh, I'm not actually going to use that today um, so we won't have to worry about that, but uh, you can find a lot of videos on explaining how to set that up if that's something you want to do. So moving kind of forward, uh, we have our double pull double throw switch. Now I'm using these very small double pull double throw switch, uh, but the wiring is all the same. So I've already kind of written on this. Uh, basically, it's if you don't know how a dub, uh, double pull double throw switch works, uh, you have three pins uh, at least in this case we have six and they are isolated from each other so the right is isolated from the left okay and the middle pin is typically uh, some form of output or input it can be either way but if the the switch is um, switched into the down position that actually has the middle and top terminals connected if you put it to the uh, top position uh, then it will connect the middle and the bottom together. Uh, what we use it for in the tortoise switch machine kind of uh, wiring is because we have to change the polarity of pin 1 and 8 uh, we, we get our power from the 12 volt DC adapter from our wall uh, which we'll, you'll see later on in the video and you can see I've marked it uh, positive and negative. So that means these two pins are positive and negative. Uh, now we have two wires completely uh, isolated from each other, okay? And they actually go down so that uh, on the left, bottom, bottom left here, it is negative because it is connected to this top right negative terminal. So you're basically taking the uh, power from the wall taking the negative side on the top terminal and then feeding power to the bottom left terminal as well and vice versa with the positive. So th what that means is in the middle the middle terminals we have going to the tortoise switch machine you can see from pin 1, pin 8 uh, when it is in the top position okay because we know that with the double pull double throw switches when it is in the bottom position it is actually making contact with the middle and top terminals when we switch it it comes along and makes contact with the middle and bottom terminals okay so in one position you are connecting pin one to the positive and in the opposite position you are pin one to the negative and vice versa with pin eight uh, that's basically it 
uh, not terribly hard to understand. You can get these in all different sizes, as you've probably seen in my how-to for my programming track. Uh, in this case, this is a double pull, double throw switch with no off. It is on, on. Uh, but if you are using double pull, double throw switches with uh, the off uh, option, that's okay too. That won't hurt it. So that's basically it. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to solder some wires onto the tortoise switch machine. Now, in like I mentioned, uh, I am not using any of the pins other than pin one and eight. And if you're looking at a tortoise switch machine, you'll have a pin one. Uh, you can actually see a one there. It likely won't be picked up on the camera, but it is just in the corner here. Uh, so let's go ahead. I'm going to get that soldered up and, uh, you know, Basically, it's really easy because as they've got these breaks in the terminals, so you just apply the wire, apply the solder, it will stick to only that terminal um, and just verify that it does not spill over, but it shouldn't unless you really give it a lot of solder. So I'm going to go ahead, get that soldered up, and we're going to take a look on how that looks. Okay guys, so I went ahead and I've soldered uh, the two wires to pin one and eight. Um, I've used solid blue for pin one and white and blue for pin eight. Um, so now that that's soldered, we actually have to add the, uh, the pivot adjuster, the uh, actually throw wire and the holding screw. Now, the wire that comes for the throw wire uh, actually is only long enough to accommodate uh, some plywood. It will not work with one inch foam or two inch foam, which I'm using. Uh, so that meant I had to purchase some piano wire off of uh, Amazon and I had to clip it and then I actually bent it into the correct um, shape. Now I'll provide a link below on what shape that needs to be but uh, it, it actually comes with the little tortoise instructions, but I'll link that down below. So all I've done is I've clicked this to the approximate length that will reach from the switch machine throw mechanism to the top of the two inch foam. So I've actually left about half an inch uh, extra, if not a little more, uh, because I can always clip it, but you, you want, you'd rather have extra than not enough. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to put the pivot adjuster in and I usually leave this not quite at the top because it's I find it hard once it's against the plywood to get down if you need to adjust it. So I usually leave it um, a little bit from the top and I'm just going to feed this wire through and I'm just going to put it in the hole. Now this is a thicker gauge piano wire than usually comes with the tortoise switch machine so I've actually had to drill out that hole to accommodate that and I've used a uh, jeweler's drill um, to do so. So now that the wire's in I'm just gonna put in the holding screw and that just actually uh, goes up against the wire to hold it in place. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. Done. Okay perfect. So that's pretty much it. That's uh that's all I have to do to the tortoise itself. Um, now, a little tip, if you do plan on moving these by hand like I just did, be very, very gentle. Um, these are not an Atlas snap switch. There are many, many gears inside there that connect to the motor. And if you force this over, you're going to break a couple teeth off the gear, if not the gear um, itself. So I, I apply some gentle pressure pressure until it starts. And then as soon as it gets to the other side, I let go. Um, we'll, um, you know, rarely do I actually have to do that uh, once it's uh, attached to the layout. In fact, I've never actually had to do that. So um, let's go ahead and uh, wire, see about wiring up the double pull, double throw switch. So uh, here we have the double pull, double throw switch. Now, uh, in my wiring, I actually use uh, a terminal block to connect everything. So 
I only have to solder everything to the actual mechanism itself, uh, like to the tortoise and like to the double pull, double throw switch. And then the other side of the wires go to the terminal block. Uh, if you're not using a terminal block method, then you would actually come in and uh, solder the terminal or the um, tortoise switch machine to the middle contacts on the double pull, double throw switch. But since I'm doing everything terminal block wise, that's not needed. Basically, what I'm going to be doing is I will be taking my brown wire here and I will be cutting a little bit off um, and I will be stripping everything. I will connect it into the top terminals, okay? And uh, from the top terminals, I will take the short wire I cut off and actually. Uh, do it crisscross to the bottom terminals, much like in our wiring diagram here, okay? Uh, I'll, I'm just basically following that. That's all I'm doing. Uh, but something a little different. Uh, I will be in the middle terminals on the way to the tortoise switch machines because I use LEDs uh, to show where the track is on my fascia. Um, I will wire these in line on the way to the tortoise so I will have I will cut this probably about here um, actually I'll only cut one and I will wire these two bicolor LEDs into the uh, into the uh, in line with the wire now these are bicolor LEDs like I mentioned I've, I've went ahead and I've soldered these together with the uh, the anode which is the longer stem uh, together so that one is green while the other is red and vice versa. Um, it really doesn't matter if you go cathode to cathode or anode to anode uh, as long as you don't do cathode to anode or anode to cathode because then they'll be the same color. So you want to make sure that they are reversed so that you have two different colors so that when the switch is flicked uh, one will be green and one will be red. So I'm going to go ahead and solder that up and show you the finished product. Okay, so here we are. We have the finished product here. Uh, I'm, I've used some different color wire. Um, this is uh, orange and white coming in from the 12 volt. Okay, and uh, you can see that that comes in. And I've used some brown wire to do the crisscross to the bottom. And I've got my green wire coming out. And you can see those bicolor LEDs are wired in line with just one side. Doesn't have to be both sides, just one side. Um, and then that goes to the tortoise switch machine. Now, I am not using capacitors for these LEDs because the tortoise switch machine actually acts as a capacitor itself. Um, if you were to use bicolor LEDs on them uh, by themselves uh, on a 12 volt current, then you would need some capacitors and resistors. Sorry, resistors uh, to make sure you don't blow the bulbs. All right, so here we're going to set everything up and using the terminal strip, I'm gonna show you how to wire everything. Here we have my orange and white wires that uh, act as my 12 volt bus line for the tortoise switch machine power. And uh, what I'm doing is I'm just unscrewing the terminal block here so I can put all the wires in easier. So I like to keep everything uniform, uh, always having the orange on the outside, the white on the inside. And what I'm going to do is I'm taking the uh, power lead from my double pull, double throw switch, and I'm actually going to line up the wires. Um, they actually match this time. Uh, typically I don't have any specific color code because I just use whatever wires I can uh, to try to use whatever I've got instead of wasting wire. But uh, in this case it tends to line up, which is great for the example. <laughs> so uh, excuse my head in the shot there. <laughs> and uh, I am doing a voiceover, so uh, you'll have to excuse any weirdness. Um, the audio didn't quite uh, work out for me, so I'd l I'm just trying to redo it. So what we're doing now is we're looking at the output from the double pull, th double throw switch, and we're gonna put that in the uh, other two terminal blocks, and uh, and we're just gonna go ahead and put that in now. With the Cat5e 
uh, or Cat6 cable. Uh, it is quite small, so terminal blocks, you, you, you just have to make sure that the screw actually does come down on the wire itself and that you don't over tighten because you will snap the wire. Um, it is a little harder to use, but I still really like using it. Um, it's a little stiff, but uh, once you get everything where you need to go, uh, it really works out. So, uh, here we have one side of the terminal block fixed, and we're just going to go ahead and attach the tortoise switch machine to the remaining terminal blocks. So that uh, the tortoise switch machine is now connected to the output on the uh, double pull double throw switch. So I'm going to go ahead and plug everything in. Please excuse the rat nest of wires. Uh, this is just to make sure everything is working. Uh, before I glue everything and, and screw everything in, uh, there's nothing worse than getting everything into place and then realizing it won't work. Okay, so you can see that as soon as I plug in, because the tortoise switch machine was in the center, it automatically goes to one side and my LEDs uh, are lit up, one green, one red. Um, that, uh, that's a good sign. <laughs> and uh, basically I'm just uh, showing you, you know, the fact that uh, the LEDs are lit and it's off camera. But when I switch them, when I switch it without my hand being in the way here, and I think that's what I'm trying to avoid, um, yeah, it's it, a. It's like impossible to do with one hand. B. Uh, it's you know I'm I'm pretty clumsy. So okay, so we're gonna go ahead and switch it. Uh, you'll see the LED lights swap colors and the tortoise switch machine go to the other side. All right, guys. So uh, now that we've tested it and we know it's working, we can go ahead and move forward. I just wanted to go over this one more time. Uh, and point out, I've mentioned the 12 volt ad wall adapter a couple times. This is 12 volt, 500 milliamp uh, wall adapter. I picked it up at the source or like Radio Shack. Uh, it's just Next Tech brand and it's just 12 volt, 500 milliamp output. And I snipped the end off, stripped the wires, put the wires in a terminal block, and that was it. So that's that's really simple. I paid like under 10 bucks for it. So uh, that is what I use to power my bus. Um, it'll do up to about 12. Once you get over 12, I would suggest probably running two. Uh, but do your research about that. I'm running no more than 12. So I, I'm going to kind of just limp it along with this. Uh, and just to go over this really quickly, we have my 12-volt my input. All right, so that goes into my terminal block, which connects directly to the input of my double pull, double throw switch. The double pull, double throw switch has the crisscross. Uh, the output has the two bicolor LEDs uh, wired in line opposite. So one's green while one's red. It's not turned on right now, obviously. Um, that continues on back to the terminal block, which is connected to the tortoise switch machine. So if you're unlike me and you're not using terminal blocks, you're going to basically have more fluid uh, wiring coming from your wiring bus to your double uh, double pull, double throw switch. And then from your double pull, double throw switch, um, you may have LEDs, you may not, and it'll go directly to your torch switch machine. So uh, that's basically it. Let's go ahead and take a look at the area that we want to install this. And then we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Pico switch. So uh, let's go ahead and look over there. Okay guys, so this is going to be the project area. Now it's a little bit um, unique to the point where this is where I put my lift out in and connect it here. Um, so first things first, uh, we are going to take a pen and stick down or maybe multiple pins, but, uh, and stick down we, where we're gonna put this. Now I'm just gonna move the camera to the side uh, so that my arm does not get in the shot here. There we go. And uh, all I'm doing is making sure that that is where it needs to go. Uh, I'm gonna put a pin in here. And there's no hole, so I'm just going to, uh, Maybe put two pins because you really don't want this thing moving around on you. It's uh, it just makes the whole thing harder if you can't be sure where things are going. 
And I'll put a pin in this side as well. Okay, so that is where the switch will go. And that's very important because once I drill the hole, <laughs> if it moves around too much, then uh, that's not going to work. <laughs> so um, make sure that your switch is, in fact, where it needs to be. And uh, once it is, make sure you tack it down. Now we're just going to get um, the hobby knife out. And uh, it doesn't really matter what kind of bit you use uh, or, or head. In this case, I'm using this where uh, it is simply sharp if it's going to focus. I guess that's okay. Anyways, it's, uh, it's only sharp on the end. This part's not sharp. Uh, but it really doesn't matter. You can, as long as you're cutting into the foam, like I said, you can pretty well use any knife uh, that you've got. Um, you just kind of want to try to make it as <laughs> as kind of accurate as possible. And what I'm doing here is um, you can see that the hole for the throw bar is right here. Okay, so I want to make that hole pretty well centered. Um, and how I'm going to start that is I'm going to take my hobby knife and there's two ties on both sides of the throw bar and I'm just going to kind of press down and, and, and cut the foam um, and uh, just make that line on both sides of the tie alright it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect now this ties fairly far away so what I'm actually going to do is just kind of make a mark on each side uh, so I can attach those. Okay, so once you have that mark down, some people might, you know, want to make um, a, a pen mark or, or something like that. And that's fine too. Um, I always just kind of cut where the ties are. Um, and then we can go ahead and uh, take the switch off. Okay, so I'm just going to, now that we've marked where we need to make our hole, uh, I'm just going to take these pins out and remove the switch or turn out. Um, there we go. We can just set that up there. So now we have the line here, and I don't know if the camera can pick that up, uh, I can't see just because of the way it's angled, but you have the line that we cut here at the top of the ties, we have the line here where the sides, just because we couldn't get right under here, and there's just a line uh, that I had. So basically, I'm just going to get my knife right in there, and I'm just, I'm not going to make it terribly, maybe like half a half an inch wider like that so at this point it's it's about an inch wide um, you know why wide enough that when I put the throw bar over it it's got lots of room actually plenty of room um, but thin enough that once I put the switch over it you won't see the hole um, and to me that's fairly important so now I'm just going to Put this in and the reason why I'm cutting this instead of just drilling a hole is because I don't know if you can notice while I'm doing it but as I'm doing it the the rail like the track bed here is is kind of giving way and what happens is you go to drill and it catches on the drill <laughs> and it makes a mess it tears it off it uh, takes away more than you want it to make you know kind of a pain in the butt now this is a rectangle it is certainly nowhere near perfect and it certainly doesn't need to be anywhere near perfect i am just basically trying to get in there and cut so that i can basically slide my exacto knife freely side to side okay so that's it and uh, we're just going to take my needle nose pliers and I'm just going to reach in there just like this and I'm going to squeeze and I'm just going to take it out. 
and all I'm doing is just removing kind of as much foam directly under the rectangle I cut as possible. Again, just kind of helps keep things clean. The drill's going in there anyway, but can't get rid of that. There we go. So, I mean, it again, nowhere near perfect, just a guide to put the drill. Um, that should be good. So now we're going to go ahead and get the drill. Like I mentioned, I'm using a 7th, 7 16th uh, drill bit to make the hole. Alright. Oh, battery should be okay. Now, with this, um, basically you're gonna want to get the drill and, and you can see the drill pretty well fits perfectly in there as centered as you possibly can uh, and level and uh, before you do this I should probably point out make sure there's nothing underneath your bench work like for me there's kind of a wire but it's not quite there nothing's directly under it um, you know that kind of stuff Another idea is you're going to want to control the drill because when you bite through the the plywood it's going to you know bite and it's going to bring the drill through and you're going to you know haul this part of the drill into your road bed and it's going to dent it potentially um, and I don't want that so I'm going to I I'm going to be very careful not to let it do that but you may want to, you know, put a piece of cardboard with a hole in it uh, or something so that when it hits, it's not going to dent your uh, your road bed. Now, um, that's pretty good. Go a little, so that little piece is catching, but that's okay. And I'm not going fast. I'm just trying to... There it goes. And that's it so it did catch a little bit of the track bed, but nothing too bad and um, <laughs> made a little bit of a mess but that's perfect um, you look through you're gonna be able to see all the way through obviously uh, very important you're gonna want to vacuum this up so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do that now Okay, so now it's all clean, everything's fixed up. Um, now, because it's a Pico switch, um, and it's got the small spring inside to keep the point rails to one side or the other, uh, we're actually gonna have to remove that spring to make it free, uh, and I will show you how to do that on pretty well most other switches. You're not gonna have to do this, but uh, again, because it's Pico, so. Um, just be advised if you have a switch that snaps to one side, uh, you're going to want to take that out. So let's go ahead, get back on the workbench, and uh, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here we are on the workbench again with the Pico switch. Uh, I believe this model is the ST-445, uh, or sorry, 245 um, or 244. I think one's the left, one's the right. Um, this is the ST-244. So we have this small cover here with these two little clips on each side. And uh, basically we're going to need to pop that off. And we're just going to get under it with a screwdriver. And just basically there's one side. Very gently. Be very, very gentle. And that's it. The spring actually came with it. And that's unfortunate. So you can see, because this is slightly magnetic, the spring is, if I move that, the spring is on my screwdriver. And that's all it is. It's just a little piece of metal and it acts as a spring. Um, you're going to want to take these out. Now I'm going to save these in case I ever want to put it back in. Um, doubtful, but you never know. So, uh, you know, put these somewhere safe. All right, and your bits and goodies... Uh, drawer <laughs> and in some cases you'll have to take the back out so I just lifted it up and you can see the back came right out 
So be careful you're not bending these two pins here. Uh, if you do try to bend them back as straight as possible. All right, and I'm just going to try to get that back and line it up and place it in. Okay, you, that's and it. now this clip's pretty tricky. Um, you just kind of gotta. And I know my big hand's in the way. Uh, I don't know if I can do this without my big hand. Let's get this. And uh, let me rotate this and try to do it this way. And But anyways, you're just basically lining up the clip. Um, my big hand's going to... It's upside down. Just put it in, back together minus that spring. If you're uh, not under pressure or not having a camera tape you, it's probably... Goodness, it's going to be a lot easier to get back on. But uh, there we go. There we go. Done. So that's... Uh, I didn't even get that on camera, I don't think. For crying out loud, guys. Um, anyways, back on. You can see it is free. It can rest in the middle there. Um, so that's what we wanted. Very important. All right, so here we are. Uh, I've got the turnout back in place. Uh, it's not pinned down, but uh, I will pin it down shortly. Um, I like to kind of keep it a little loosey-goosey so I can adjust just a little bit if I need to uh, to find the sweet spot, but basically. Uh, I'm on my own, so if you have two people, it's going to be a lot easier. But because uh, it's just me, I kind of do this in steps. Uh, basically, as, as you know, the throw bar is no longer springed. So I take my tortoise. Now I've already done some test fitting, so uh, I've already put my pivot adjuster down a little bit, just because it makes the swing so much more, uh, so much more exaggerated that it's easier to see if it actually works or not. Uh, and I center it. And what I do is I just basically I put that down. Uh, I stick it up and I get the throw wire through the throw bar hole and I just kind of, I'm not going to actually do it because it's going to be impossible to do on camera, <laughs> but um, I basically just hold it on the under underside of the, the plywood and I get the throw wire through the throw bar, throw bar hole and once that's in place I kind of go back and forth to make sure that the rails uh, are touching the sides really well you know not just oh there's a small space no make sure it's making full contact it's all the way over both sides uh, and as I test you know I adjust my pivot adjuster I bring it down up uh, I'll move it slightly side to side or up to uh, front and back uh, and I slightly move the turnout uh, until I hit that sweet spot. Now, if you're having trouble, you may need to bore out the, the drilling, like the hole we drilled earlier. Uh, you need, might need to bore that out a little more um, or make sure there's nothing in the hole, such as little burrs from the wood or foam uh, blocking the wire from going. So what I'm going to do off camera is I'm going to hold it, find the sweet spot, and mark it with a pen, and then... Um, kind of show you where that is and what I do next. So here we are underneath the layout. Um, like I said, I have to hold it and make the marks at the same time. So I only make two marks at a time on the same side because what I do then, um, I don't know if you can see the mark here and, uh, and here, I put my screws in and then I kind of slide the tortoise machine over and in tighten up the screws and then I can put the third um, I don't usually put all four in I find three just as good but you can certainly put in four if you need to um, so basically we need screws now the screws I use are wood screws I don't know if you can see that because the lights pretty terrible they're uh, four by five eighths and uh, they're just a Robertson head and uh, zinc plated with screws. Not that that really matters because we're indoors. So I always have uh, four screws at least because uh, we all know I'm going to drop a couple. <laughs> so, and I've just got a piece of foam to kneel on um, just because 
way back when. I hurt my knees and never been the same since. So I know the light's not going to be perfect here. Um, yeah, I'm kind of blocking it with my thing and it's kind of... I indented it with the uh, pen. I actually indented the wood so I could get the screw in easier. And you're just screwing it in. Alright, so what I do here is I take my tortoise and I align, I just get it up there and I have to put it through the hole. Okay, so let's do the hole. Like I said, I just kind of bring it over and slip it into these screws where the notches are. And actually, I can even let that sit on its own, which is awesome. And then you just tighten the screws. All right, so I actually did end up putting all four screws in. And uh, you can see, like, it's not going anywhere. So that's perfect. You don't want it to move, nothing. So uh, uh, let's go ahead and make sure on the top of the layout that everything is good. And then it's basically just wiring it up, and we're done. Okay, so... Here it is on one side, let me just reach under. And it kind of snaps, but uh, that's just these Picos. And you can see all the way over, so it's perfect. Great, so I'm going to make my small control panel. Um, nothing special, I'm just drilling holes in a wood shim and then gluing everything there. <laughs> And then I will uh, attach everything the exact same way I have shown you guys already. And uh, we'll just hook it up to our power, make sure it works one more time on the actual layout, and we're good to go. Okay, so you can see that I've got my little control panel here. It's all wired up. And uh, let's go ahead and give it a test. Goes over. goes over. Perfect. So all that's left to do is cut the excess wire off this and then glue the turnout down so it doesn't move and we're good to go. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video. Okay guys, well that's it. Uh, that is how I install a tortoise switch machine on my layout. Uh, I know I didn't show exactly what I was doing through every step and that was just a time constraint. I initially did that where I showed you soldering all my wires and you know mounting the machine on the underside of the layout. Uh, the video was about an hour and a half, two hours. Um, and that that's just too long in my opinion. Uh, so this is, I think this will be about 45 minutes or so, no longer. And that's, that's the limit. I don't want to make any videos more than 45 minutes. Um, unless it's like a full op session and that's kind of different but for a tutorial I want to keep it short so thank you guys for watching if you have any comments criticisms or questions uh, please comment down below if you found this video helpful uh, informative or you just plain found it enjoyable don't forget to like it and if you're not and you want to be please uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more how to's ops videos layout updates, the works. Uh, so thank you guys for watching, and until next time, enjoy your bacon.